Now before I continue on with the Star Wars Legion LAAT patrol ship, I need to take care of the base. <laughs> Now my plan for this base is to use common household items rather than specialized modeling products for uh, doing the base. Just to demonstrate, you know, a method of doing that. There's nothing special about it. If you have the the modeling specific products, then by all means use them. But I know not everybody does. Not everybody has the budget for things like that. So I'm going to try and keep it real simple and low budget. I'm going to be using things like just white glue. Some people here in the U.S. call it Elmer's glue. PVA glue. It's just your plain white glue. I've got some corks that I'm going to be using pieces of to make rocks. And then I've got just some sand from my backyard. I went out, dug up uh, a, a fairly good amount of it, and sifted it, put it on a baking sheet, put it in the oven uh, for about 25-30 uh, minutes, just at minimum heat. I think it was 250 degrees, something like that, just to make sure that it killed anything that was in it um, and just kind of baked off any material. Then I re-sifted it again, and I got this nice, uh, fine bowl of dirt here that I can use for my models. I want the base to have some texture to it, some lumps and some bumps and things like that. I'm not going to build it up real high, but just not flat is what I'm looking for. Now there are a lot of modeling products that you could use to do this. Um, you could use uh, various kinds of the two-part putties that you put together. There's pastes. There's all sorts of stuff that you can use. But in keeping with stuff you got around the house theme, um, I'm going to use shredded up newspaper. I've got some newspaper here that uh, I just took my exacto knife and shredded it into strips and then just tore it up a little so there's, you know some long strips some short pieces just got a bunch of it here uh, in in this plastic bowl now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some water in it I'm gonna add in enough water that I want to get all the pieces soaked and then I'm gonna squeeze it out over the sink and uh, and it'll be kind of a gloopy gloopy mess at that point but that's what I'm going for now after giving that a good soaking um, I shredded it up into even smaller pieces and then poured out most of the water so that I've just got this this wet mass of newspaper goop here. Now I'm going to add a generous portion of my white glue. This is what's going to bind it all together. And I'll add in a little more water to thin the white glue down. And now I just kind of get messy with it. and knead it all together. Now I'm just going to take lumps of this stuff and I'm just going to start pressing it into place. Now I'll give that plenty of time to dry. I'll set it on top of our refrigerator because it's right under an air conditioning vent so it will have air blowing on it for a good part of the day and I'll just let it sit for 24 hours because it does take take a little while to dry. All right, well, everything is dried up now. It actually took longer than 24 hours. Um, it's kind of getting, it's cooling off here. It's not cool, cold yet, but our air conditioning hasn't been running as much, so there wasn't as much air blowing over it. Um, but I had some other things to do. Wasn't able to work on it for a few days anyway. Probably took about three days to fully dry because um, it was just very, very wet. All right, for this step, I'm going to use a bowl and a spoon. And no, we're not having cereal. <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a real good blob of this white glue. Next I'm going to put in some just tap water. It's just plain old water, nothing special about it. And I'm going to mix that up. I'm just going to start putting in some of my homemade sand. I'll mix it up. As you can hear, it's very gritty. All right, it's at the consistency I want. Um, you can see how that looks. I can pile it up, but then I can smooth it out. So it's very workable, very spreadable, and uh, it's going to look like dirt when it dries. And now I get to play in the mud, and I'm just going to take this mixture, spoon it on there, work it around like that. And now that I've got it completely covered, I'm just going to use this brush, and I moistened it with a little bit of water. 
although the stuff is still very, very runny. And I'm just going to go through here and I'm just going to poke it like this because what I want to do is introduce some texture and also I want to make sure that it's pushed down into all the little nooks and crannies of that newspaper surface. All right, now that I've got that mixture fully on there, I'm just going to sprinkle some loose dirt over all of it. All right, after I completely covered that in my homemade sand, literally homemade, right from my backyard, I shook out the excess. I just shook it back right into the container here so I can use it again. And what I'm going to do now is let this dry. And I'm going to go ahead and clean these edges off with my exacto knife and all I'm doing is just laying it flat against the edge and just kind of scraping and sawing um, to get that cleaned up. Now I want to add some what's going to look like larger rocks, not big giant rocks, but just you know maybe rocks that are roughly calf height, maybe knee height on a man. Um, so what I like to use for this, again going with the the it's around the house and it's cheap. I'm going to use some cork. And this is just uh, from a bottle of wine. And you can cut off pieces and break them apart like that. You can shave off pieces from the top. The idea here is to just start cutting it up and see what shapes you get. All right, now that I've got a variety of pieces of different shapes and sizes, I'll use some thinned PVA glue. And this is not as thin as I've been doing in the rest of the video. This is maybe about two parts glue, one part water. I just want it to be able to spread easily. I'll just coat the bottom of my so-called rock and just stick it on there. All right, now I want to take a step to kind of integrate the rock into the surrounding surface. So I've thinned my PVA glue down with more water so that it's a little runnier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it right up along the edges of the rocks like this so that I've got a good coat of it, but I'm not yet going up onto the rock, but just enough to get some good amount of glue right there. I'm just going to sprinkle some dirt, some of my uh, dirt mixture from my backyard. I'm just going to sprinkle that right there. And what that'll do is just help integrate the lower areas of the rock into the surrounding surface. And I've thickened my glue and water mix up just a bit by adding a little glue back into it. What I'm going to do is just paint some spots just randomly around the base like this because what I want to do now is introduce smaller rocks onto it and for this I'm going to use kitty litter. Now this is clean kitty litter. Um, I don't recommend using dirty kitty litter. Um, that might not work too well with it but I mean I guess it would give it some extra texture for sure but I'm just gonna put these around like that just randomly putting them around here and there and if you want to do some specific placements I may do that you can put some in a specific area you know individually build them up um, put as many or few as you like it's all subjective You'll notice that some of that dirt is still loose that I spread around the edge there. That's okay. I'll just let the glue settle into that, make a little bit of a mess, give us some randomness, and just keep putting the kitty litter on. Now with the kitty litter in place, I'm going to take one final step before I set this aside to dry. I've thinned my glue back down so that it's very thin and runny. And I'm just going to go over each of these cork rocks and give it a good coating of that thinned PVA mixture. This is going to do several things for me. One, it's going to flow around the edges and just help lock that into place so that it's, it's not 
uh, going to move once all this glue is dry. Because right now this is, I mean, I can just push this around very easy. Because PVA glue doesn't have a lot of grip when it's wet. Once it's dry, it has plenty of grip. But this is also going to seal off that cork. It's very absorbent. And uh, even after you've primed it, if, uh, if you haven't sealed this up, it can be the devil to paint. Because it'll just keep soaking up that paint. So by putting this thin coat over it, and I may go back and do a second coat once it's getting closer to dry. But by putting this second coat, or this coat over it, of the glue, it'll help lock in that surface. It'll be much easier to paint. It'll settle into the nooks and crannies. And it won't, it won't leave a, too much of a texture. As it starts to dry, if you see that it is leaving texture, you can add a little more water to it and thin it around and move it around or even cut it off or stick another rock on top of it or put some sand on it, whatever you want to do to kind of take a cue from watching Bob Ross videos. You know, this is, this is your world that you're making. You make it however you want, and it'll be just right. All right, I can live with that. I'll give this, uh, probably in real time, I'll give this a couple of days to dry, work on some other projects, and once it's dry, I'll take it by this stand here, and I'll just give it a few good taps on my model desk here to knock off anything that's that's uh, loose, and then I'll spray prime it. Well, I've obviously taken some steps off camera. Um, all I did was I uh, sprayed this with a rattle can primer of uh, the Mr. Mahogany, I think 1500. Uh, it's basically a dark brown primer. That's, that's what I did. And I could have used black. I could have used um, another brown. The point of the primer was I wanted to make sure that the areas, the little nooks and crannies under what are the rocks and along the edges here were very dark so that if, if I miss them in painting um, or if I leave them unpainted like underneath this rock here, this overhang area, then it would just appear to be in shadow. If I would have used gray or something like that, those kind of things would have stuck out and uh, shown in any areas that I didn't, uh, that I didn't paint. So that's the, the thinking behind using that. I did mask this off. Uh, some of it got onto the lower part of the stand. I'm not really worried about that. I don't get too hung up about, well, how does this look? How do I integrate that into it? I, 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 just, I just don't. I don't worry about it. So now it's time to actually start painting the base. Now I may have gone a little overly clever with my paint. Um, I like this middle stone uh, from Vallejo Model Air, but after I got it in my palette, I thought, that's eh, a little too green. So I mixed in some Iraqi sand to tone that green down. And when I mixed these in probably a 50-50 ratio, what I got was Iraqi sand that's a little more green than normal Iraqi sand. So it still wasn't what I wanted, but I thought, okay, the problem now is the colors are just a little too saturated. So I threw in some neutral gray, uh, maybe just a couple of drops, mixed that in, and got a color that I wanted. If you're going for a particular look, uh, some kind of Star Wars canon look, then certainly let um, wherever you're trying to replicate, let that drive the colors. I'm not going for anything like that. I just want this to look like some kind of dirt. So the color I ended up with, it looks like some kind of dirt. <laughs> now, nothing special about what I'm doing now. I'm just painting it on there. And you'll notice I'm using this dabbing motion. I mean, I can paint it, but this dabbing motion is going to do uh, less damage to any of the things on the surface. Everything's glued down. Everything's in place, but some things may be a little loose. Now, I've knocked it against the edge of the, the desk here a little bit to knock off anything that is loose, but... Uh, if there's, I don't, I don't want to put too much stress on all those little rocks and things like that. So by using this dabbing motion, and, and you know, I've got a large flat brush, so it'll go fairly quick. But by using this dabbing motion, it just makes sure that I don't, uh, that I don't knock too many things loose. 
I am going to paint the whole base, all the rocks, everything, because I want them to start with the same uh, undertone and it would just be, it's easier just to paint everything than to try and avoid some stuff. Now I've painted that coat of paint on and I, I didn't try to go for 100% opacity. I just kept dabbing it around. So in some places it's more opaque, in some places it's less and that primer coat is showing through, but that's, that's fine. You want variation. I'm just going to use some Vallejo Deck 10 now, and I'm just going to dry brush fairly heavily across the surface, uh, focusing mainly on the dirt areas. I'm not as worried about the rocks right now because they're going to get a complete new coat of paint. I'm just going to dry brush this on nothing special about using Deck Tan. I just want contrast, and I want it to be kind of light. And because I'm going for a more dusty look, um, a lighter dusty look that's why I picked this color but of course you know any any color that just shows some contrast uh, is is good this process can knock off a few little rocks and dirt and things like that generally if they get knocked off you, you take it really won't show up you just remove them and keep going if it dislodges a section that makes it a little more obvious um, just go back with the dirt mixture, whatever you used for your base, and just do a patch up job, let that dry, get back to it. All right, the next thing I want to do is I want to give everything a wash. Now, I've tried on the, on the back side of it here, I've tried several combinations of these, and what I ended up with was basically a mix of mostly this Vallejo model wash, and then I threw in a little bit of oil to earth, and some Agrax Earth Shade. These ended up being, even though the bottom of it looks very bright, it, when you pour it out, it looks about like Agrax Earth Shade. And then I just threw in a little bit of this gray to desaturate it. All I'm going for here, again, is just a kind of desaturated, earthy look. And I just kept playing with the mix until I thought, yeah, okay. I didn't think so much, yeah, that looks right, but more of, uh, okay, uh, that's enough playing around, just go with it. So it's just a dark brown wash. It's very watery, and I'm just going to start stippling it on like that and moving it around. That's going to darken things up quite a bit, but that's okay. That's why I did that very light dry brushing over the top of everything to uh, provide plenty of contrast. Now, these washes tend to dry with less opacity than they go on, so it won't shift it quite so much, but it definitely will color shift it a bit. I want to give the rocks a different color than the surrounding dirt around them. So to start that process, this is not the final color, but to start that process, I'm going to give an undercoat of this Vallejo deck tan. I'm also painting these little rocks, but I'm not trying to completely paint them uh, all over. I'm mostly hitting the top of the rock because that's where I'm going to be putting most of the color, because you know there's going to be sand and stuff like that blowing up under it. Now I want to introduce some cold tones into it. So I'm going to use some Citadel Contrast paint. I'm using this Apothecary White, and I'm going to use this on the larger rocks and on most of the smaller rocks. And what it's going to do is it's just going to kind of fill those in, give them a rock-like appearance. It's going to settle into the recesses and give just a little bit of shading, but it's going to make them just stand out from the background. And of course, all along the way, I'm looking at it and saying, do I want to adjust it? Do I want to add some more color? Do I want to add some more shade? It's always an evolving process. Even if you have in mind what you're thinking of doing. I'm going to go ahead and start painting these other rocks. Even if you have in mind what you're thinking of doing, as you move along and you see how the work develops, it's always a good idea to say, well, is there something that I think I could improve or change? Or, you know, did an idea hit me? And just see where it takes you. And you can see that I've used those other um, contrast paints to just kind of give a different look to some of the rocks. I like the color that the Apothecary White imparted to these rocks, the bigger rocks. 
but I was hoping it was going to give a bit more of a shadow effect and it's not it's not providing as much depth as I wanted so what I've done is I've added just a little bit of basilicon gray another contrast paint to that uh, apothecary white and that's going to darken these rocks a bit but what it's also going to do is give me more contrast not paint but actual contrast and it's going to make the recesses and the little nooks and crannies show up a little better now it's going to pull back from most of the flat surfaces so i'll still retain some of that lighter color that i wanted or at least a flavor of it but into the darker areas or into the shadowed areas it's going to settle in a little more and just give them a little more depth and i think that's what i'm looking for yeah i like that this is what i was talking about sometimes you adjust along the way depending on how things look and depending on what you're trying to achieve all right i like the way that looks that's it's a little darker than i had originally intended but the shadow that it's introduced the the, the the depths and the highlights that it's brought in there I really like that and it looks kind of like granite I think so I'm real happy with how that looks I am calling this done and I'm quite happy with it uh, and it you know you saw I just used some simple materials that you can find generally quite easily or it could be substituted with other things um, I could have used just small rocks for all of this I could have um, you know used uh, various various other materials on this I could have put some you know twigs and bark and um, even seasonings uh, I've seen people use you know things like oregano and things like that to to represent some leaves and some foliage so there's a lot of things that you have around your house now that you could probably use for basing and it would look great and it doesn't require a lot of expense now if you have the you know if you have the the modeling materials of course go with those but um, this this can be accomplished with stuff you have around the house and even though I was using some things like washes and contrast paints even craft paints just thin down with with water um, could could do this just fine uh, being creative with the materials you have is really a lot of fun and that's what this is all about I'm not so much concerned about you know the base and the lore of the base I just wanted to have fun playing with these materials and I've had that so um, it's a good process and it's a lot of fun well thank you so much for watching this video I am grateful especially if you're here hanging around at the end I'm always um, uh, appreciative of the folks who spend the time to watch all the way at the end in fact let's let's do one of those things where we have a little fun um, if you uh, if you're uh, still watching at this point why not drop a comment down below that just says yo Rocky <laughs> alluding to the rocks on the surface of this base so yeah yo Rocky we'll go with that and I'll know what you're talking about and that you hung around to the end and I'm certainly grateful for it well, in the next video in this series, I'll get back to the patrol gunship and I'll be um, doing some final weathering and panel lining and things like that. So if you want to see that, hit the subscribe button down over here and the little bell icon so you'll know when I have new videos out. How was that for a professional segue right there, huh? But uh, um, please do subscribe. And I would be most grateful if you would give this video a like and drop a comment below, whether you're saying yo, Rocky, or not. Um, just drop a comment below and, and uh, I'd love to hear from you, but it also helps me grow the channel and I'd be most grateful for that. There are also links down below to the social media that I am on and there's a link to Patreon. If you would like to support the work that I do, uh, I would be most grateful if you click on that link and just see what I have to offer. Uh, on Patreon, Patreon subscribers at the $5 and $10 level, each week they get uh, two extra videos, either a vlog where I just talk about various things. Um, and I also have exclusive builds for patrons of other models. Um, and it's just short 10, 15 minute videos where I go through building another model. Uh, so if you like what I do 
in these free YouTube videos, check out the Patreon stuff, and it'll be supporting me at the same time. And my family and I would be most grateful for your consideration. With all that being said, I'll leave you with one final thought. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.